This is Twit. You mentioned um, uh, the, the the kind of labels in terms of price tags that have been put on Mars sample return itself, but like per- Perseverance, I think is estimated at two point seven billion, and 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 you get a lot for that, right? You've got these samples that are cached now. You've got right. uh, a long lived uh, rover that's doing all, all sorts of things as it's climbing a mountain on on Mars, and then the the next evolution for a much larger vehicle. You know, the 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 cost that NASA has been talking about and saying is too expensive is is that eleven billion number, which it sounds like you have some stuff, uh, some thoughts to kind of really put that in perspective. Well, but I did want to say right. my my father in law has a saying, you know that. <laughs> If you pay peanuts, you get monkeys, which is, you know, like you, basically you get what you pay for. So if you're not like to your point, willing to commit in advance, and we discussed this at length about several other subjects, Rod and I, if you're not going to commit to spending the money for what you need to do the work, then no one's going to be happy. But, um, but it sounds like this, this number, this 11 billion might not be, you know, the sticking point that it sounds like, I mean, if you could, cause it sounds like you've got yeah. some stuff to tell, talk to us about that. No, I, 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 I think you're right. I mean, that, uh, to be fair, if you look at the $11 billion with it, where it came from, it's actually a, they said, okay, well, what's the worst it could be. Yeah. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. and particularly if you live given all the constraints, um, the constraints, uh, NASA, for example, is to listen, you know, Hey, we don't have the budget we used to have. You know, we've got other priorities, Artemis, we've got other things to do. This is not, our, this is not number one in NASA's party list, you mm-hmm. guys. This is, you know, it's great science. We love science fans, but if, um, but um, um, we've got other science too. And there are other scientists who are chomping the bit. We want to go to Venus. We've got other things we need to do. We have more astronomy stuff to do. It's getting, it, we, you know, we, we can only allocate this much per year. And uh, so they said, okay, if you did that, um, then you would have this, in order to develop this stuff, you would have this small standing army that would d- do a little bit at a time. It's kind of like if you did a, a build your house, but you can only afford uh, a, a couple thousand dollars a year mm. uh, to, yeah. to, to, your, to your house. <laughs> and then you start collecting wood from Home Depot. You start putting stuff up in the corner. You still have a few employees because you have to, to keep designing it to make sure it works. And you start putting the pieces gradually. And, it's, and you integrate that over long periods of time. It turns out, and you add inflation on top of that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty soon you're, you're talking about some real money. Um, well, and if you leave your wood out too long, it starts to rot before you have a chance to put up the roof. Well, I won't even go into those kind of details yeah. either, because there, there are human human factors issues too, like like right. cor- like corporate knowledge and memory. Um, so, and how do you retain that? Um, so we so that's what they did. So, so this is what the worst case, and that was considered. Oh, that's not that's not acceptable. Well, yeah. You, you, by the way, samples can get back in twenty forty. Um, mm-hmm. I don't, and that's like, no one has that kind of patience, apparently. Um, it's a long time from now, right? 2040? Is that a long time? <laughs> well, and I bet you if we had a time machine, I asked you in 2040, was that a long time ago? You go, no, it wasn't that long. I actually didn't take that long to go from 2024 to 2040. But it, um, but, but in our world, it is a long time. It's hard to commit anything for this, for that period of time. So, so it's a lot of challenge. I mean, so the reason that in some sense, there are ways of making the thing a lot cheaper and a lot easier to do, but it requires something that NASA can't do right now because of the constant constraints. And that is putting a big pile of money on it oh. um, over a small number of years. Uh, and, you know, it, cause you can fund it this way or you could fund it and get it right. over with, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, and so many of our missions you are, and, and that's the cool thing about Mars with a two, two year lifetime. Um, there's this wonderful drumbeat of, you know, it, you know, we can't be late. You've got to, we got to get the money in there. We've got to make it happen. Got to make it happen. Cause, cause if you missed your launch window, your two week launch period, you'd have to wait 28, 26 months before you can go again. And that's going to big, that's going to be ka-ching because, because all these people have to kind of hang out and wait for operations and you, and you just can't lay them all off and then hire them back again. Cause they're not going to be around. They're going to be working for blue or spacex or whatever you know so so you're, well, you're, and, you're stuck and we've seen that we've seen examples of that with with the european space agency's you know challenges with exomars i mean they had delays oh, they missed the window then they came up with the next window then there's a war in ukraine and they lose their launch vehicle i know and then it's now they so have to wait again another two years and so there's other it's forces tr- beyond tragic. just the technical ones too that could happen feel so bad uh, yeah. yeah yeah i feel so bad for those guys they, they work so hard for so long yeah. So, and they're and they're and they're great people there, but it's it's like it's it's it feels it's it feels uh 
uh, Kafka-esque, mm. um, the, the kind of the, their scientific, the, that effort where something seems to happen and you just never couldn't get there. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's very frustrating. And we, we, and I'll be honest, we have been, you know, incredibly lucky to have had a consistent funding, consist, consistent drumbeat, biting off things that were not too expensive, that were affordable, that people could actually commit to. Um, but if that commitment level raises above a certain threshold, it's like, no, we can't buy. That's just too much to swallow for mm -hmm. a particular launch window. And that's, I think that's the situation we're finding with them. Sample, more sample return. It's you know, just like, you know, you know, today we look back at James Webb and we go, wow, that all that, you know, oh nine, $10 billion worth every penny. We're getting some amazing things. We look because back. Because it opened. Yeah. It <laughs> all opened. It all pulled together. And, you know, the science we're getting is, you know, revolutionary. And it really is. And I'm so amazed and thrilled but you know if you had said hey hey can i get 10 billion dollars from you guys and then go like you got to be kidding me no um that would eat the rest of science science and astronomy missions lunch for the next decades and that would what's all we'll be able to do and and they're and they go well maybe that's the only thing we can do and that's what we did but ultimately that's what happened they actually mm -hmm. did do it and they kept up and they didn't give up um uh, NASA, you know, ironically, I don't know if you know that the sample return program, we never got to the point of actually submitting a budget for it. Mm. So everybody's senses, guys are too expensive. Well, we actually haven't told you how much is expensive, how expensive it is yet. We haven't well, even talk, had our, talk we haven't had our PDR that, yet. Because we, 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 <laughs> we have this number thrown in our face over and over again. First, it was 7.5 billion. Now it's 11 billion. Uh, and the only way I can think of to get Congress to just say yes is to tell them North Korea is about to return robotic samples from Mars. But where's that number coming from if it's not from you? Because they well, keep pointing no, listen, it back to you. Well, well to JPL, I mean, I, I, I I'm not going to answer that. I have no idea. And that's, I mean, you know, I think they would like us to be cheaper. Um, yeah. Like, you know, everybody wants if you, you know, but. We know how much things cost. We, you've seen people seen how much stuff, you know, you know how how tough it is to make curiosity and perseverance and spirit opportunity and pathfinder and Mars reconnaissance orbiter, all these different stuff we right. people involved in. So, you know, um, it's just you know, it, it, listen, the, the th what they're trying to do, and they're doing the right thing. They're saying, hey, you guys. We don't know yet how much it's going to cost. First of all, we haven't finished doing the math to do the estimate. So we have not submitted an estimate, official estimate, because the NASA has is something called a key decision point, um, KDPC, where you commit to a life cycle cost. We haven't got there yet. We had um, we never got there. And um, but there's no doubt that the way it was set up it was going to be expensive and no matter what number, whether it's 11, seven, six, doesn't matter. It's a big number. Just say big. Don't say, give them, don't say number. It's going to be big. Can NASA afford big? And the answer is, I don't think NASA can afford big right now because we've got higher yeah. priorities than that. And it's really, so, so the people who are saying it, you know, they can point to whatever they want, but it's, there is no doubt it's hard. I mean, I, I was, I'm on the review board for these things and uh, these projects and it's daunting. You know, the size of that lander is really big. I, I was, yeah. I was, I was the chair for the interdescent landing review. You know, they're pulling out all the stops, you know, for example, you know, when this vehicle enters in order not to hit the surface, they, this, this ballistic entry, they dive as deep as they dare into the, into the atmosphere, quite steep. They fly horizontally and then they have, they lift, they, they pull the, they have the they very large center of mass offset is the largest ever to pull up, try to get more lift and get it higher off above the ground, higher above the ground. And so it actually does a, a scoop, a, 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 a dive and a, and a pull up where we can hi be high enough to open the parachute and have enough timeline to get to the surface. And to do, and while they're doing that, they know the vehicle doesn't know where it is and needs to help guidance. And especially when it's lofting in the air like this, it needs to look out the window 
So now for the first time, normally we, we look out the window once the heat shield is gone. Now we have to add a window, look out the window while you're still flying horizontally toward the ground to see where the heck you are so you can help control and guide your entry better. Um, again, all trying to trying to squeeze this incredible mass into this this fixed volume. Um, uh, and and so it's it's a challenge. It's a really it's a strong, difficult engineering challenge. And not to mention, we have to put a next step up in parachute size, you know, and yeah. and all that stuff is because we're trying to land this massive rocket uh, and uh, with a European arm in it um, that does the sample motion and handling um, uh, all the other equipment we need to be able to control the temperature of of this system um and and have all the features you need to do the the the, the, the sample container the opera the os we call it the orbit, orbiting sample um container um has to has to have uh, uh, you know it has to be a double seal in order to, uh, to keep prevent uh back contamination with earth there's a whole bunch of things and the orbiter has to carry all this stuff with it i mean it's even that it, the, the europeans have been struggling with this growing mass of this equipment we needed to bring with us in order to capture and seal up and store and uh, and return the samples back to a direct return back to earth we just and all this stuff is because we're because we're trying to find ways to um capitalize on the partnerships and the relationships um and it turns out it, it's actually probably more expensive to do it that way there's mm. there are ways to do it cheaper but you have to be willing to take risks. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there.